Hello and welcome to an unaffordable energy problem. Maintaining this house is an absolute bottomless pit and it needs constant dehumidification and uh, heating is completely out of the question and even as it is, electri electricity bills without any heating um, other than off-peak electricity are a lot of money. Um, there's a heritage landscape all the way around and making the environmental changes with fields of solar panels is wholly inappropriate. Over in the park there we've got a very small 4 kilowatt installation and that's quite helpful. Um, it has the usual government tariff and that's helpful but it really doesn't generate enough when we want to use it to uh, reduce our electricity bills as such and we've got to think of energy in a more efficient way. It faces south, it gets the best tariff, it means that you get electricity um, between 11 o'clock and 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Not well, terribly useful. One needs to have different directions. Our normal view of solar panels um, is actually really pretty hideous but not all roofs really need to look like this. We have here um, thin fill panels which are installed on the front of a building, on the south front, which actually supplement the panels on the roof. These actually do very, very well, especially in low winter sunshine and in low light levels. And here we have uh, brown thin film panels which will work really, really well on the side of the building facing east. Uh, they do very well in the morning. Here on the barn and workshops we've got a huge roof that is southeast facing. It's more east. That's great. It means that early morning electricity is possible. And just the top six panels give about a kilowatt which supplements the uh, field installation with four kilowatts very nicely and extends that into the early morning of the day. So we get out of this a uh, peak between uh, 9.30, 10 o'clock in the morning and uh, midday, one o'clock in the afternoon. And then we've covered the front of this building with panels and this is really helpful with low sunshine in winter. And um, winter sunshine is really absolutely uh, <laughs> gold dust. Um, and um, so at, at vertical panels on, the, on a, a wall here um, really, really helps in winter. Some of these panels are thin film panels. They produce about 70 volts. So it's quite difficult to cope with, with many, um, many uh, inverters nowadays. And here we have a couple of conventional panels producing 30 volts each. And I've been buying shattered panels where the glass has been broken. And I've managed to treat these so that um, uh, even broken panels, which can be obtained quite cheaply, um, can be um, uh, protected, given a protected coat, um, and these will generate useful amounts of electricity. Coming inside, we'll find my experimental installation. Most panels are normally um, at, uh, wired in series, so that 30 volts plus 30 volts plus 30 volts comes up to, you know, if you have eight panels, that'll be about 240 volts. Well, the way in which um, that, of course, is totally incompatible with storing electricity in batteries. And so I've been uh, trying to find uh, batteries as cheaply as I can, so as it's economical, um, and so as it's possible to test the economics. Um, let's put the lights on. Um, the lights are, in actual fact, um, uh, on our 24-volt system. Um, these are LED lights and if I put the lights on here um, uh, these at night are absolutely superb and so um, at about two watts each um, we're drawing about uh, 20 to 30 watts instead of um, these fluorescents which are four, four, four tubes of 40 watts each that's 160 watts each so here we've got uh, about um, 140 times 4, uh, so that's 560 watts. 
um, and the LED bulbs are really just as good at night. So I've been I was putting electricity into a battery installation. Battery installations are difficult. Um, you've got 12 volt uh, batteries and um, 12 volts is a pain. To take out large amounts of current uh, or large wattages means very large amounts of current and 24 volts seems to be a better compromise between availability of equipment and, and the power out. Um, for instance, a kilowatt out of um, a 12 volt batteries is basically near to 100 watts, sorry, 100 amps. Um, whereas it goes to 24 volts and you've, you're coming down then to uh, 50 amps, which is more manageable. Um, wiring batteries up is dangerous. Um, and you have to make sure that all of the batteries are electrically treated the same. That means that the resistance of each battery through its wire to where you're drawing it off has to be the same. So um, uh, this means that the end batteries, for instance, have to have the same length of wire as the middle batteries before they then go off to your controllers. Um, this is a very, very much an experimental installation, and I've started small, um, and so here we have um, a bit of a mess with trying out one controller and another controller, and I've tried as many different bits of equipment as I possibly can. Um, here we've got wires coming in individually from these different solar panels in parallel, so that um, uh, this is our negative um, and these are two groups. This is one at about uh, working voltage 31 volts, another one at about 29 volts. And here we've got our positives coming in. And uh, these uh, then come down to uh, the uh, uh, two uh, controllers here that are in use. Um, now here, uh, it's very, very important to make sure things are fused. I'm using uh, lengths of solder wire, which are brilliant. They blow at about 7 amps. And that is just about uh, the current output of a solar panel in really absolutely full uh, sun. So um, the 7 amp fuses work very well with that. And you can see they then go into the two wires for two uh, controllers. Um, I'm moving away from this to a larger installation. We've got more batteries here, um, and um, these ones are yet to be commissioned. Now, one major problem is that you get a load of batteries. They'll, all, they'll have been sitting for different times. They'll all be at different voltages. So you have to wire them up as 12 volts, get them to the same voltage, the same state of charge or discharge, and then you can rewire them into 24 volts. And so here we've got the red lead for positive 24 and that's there. On account of space, we've got these two in parallel instead of that one, but it's about the same capacity, that should be fine. And then I'm doing something that I think is quite clever. Instead of using uh, um, the large connecting um, straps like these, I'm using again a piece of solder wire between uh, the uh, um, middle connection of the batteries at the 12 volt side, so that between naught and 24 volts, these two batteries connected in series together have to have a link. And by putting a piece of solder wire in, uh, in each, in as the link, link, it means that each um, short circuit current going through each battery is limited to about 7 amps, which therefore means that out of this block of what should be 6 batteries, it's effectively six batteries the same size, we can then only get about 21 amps. And I've done that with these batteries. Um, so there's our solder wire um, connecting them up. So that is another 20 amps, that's another 20 amps, that's another 20 amps, that's another 20 amps. So um, it's groups like that. And the wires from the plus and the, plus and the minus come to uh, connector blocks and I'm using connector blocks, uh, um, and in this system, I'm using a convention of brass ones for positive and zinc-plated ones for 
uh, negative. And again, I'm using fuse, uh, sorry, solder wire as a fuse. So this is 10 strands of solder wire that are, is, uh, are twisted together, and that blows at about 70 amps. And you can see that I've actually had uh, minor problems with it blowing less because I didn't actually twist them together. Um, and this is a very, very important protection device. When you've got a short circuit on 24 volts um, from a set of batteries, um, wires can get hot and there can be big bangs. Um, this is one set of batteries that I'm just commissioning. They're old and actually they're not very good. And I'm going to experiment with those uh, with Bedini charging. Over here, we've got... <coughs> Uh, more batteries which have been um, uh, uh, which are ready to be commissioned um, this bank of batteries has um, all of the pluses and the minuses connected together one by one so all of these batteries are 12 volts in parallel and are being charged I'm using um, an American battery de desulfator well I don't know whether that works um, or not but what I am doing is to take this wire from my 24 volt system over there um, to a big capacitor because uh, these, uh, this wire is very, very thin, so there's a bit of a voltage drop. And I'm taking that to a, a voltage changer. It's a, a, um, a buck reducer. And it has a little coil which it excites um, and um, it takes the current at the end of the uh, off the coil and it uses uh, energy stored in that magnetic ring um, to change the voltage I don't know if you can hear it there might be a high-pitched whistle and you probably couldn't hear that it's probably above the frequency but uh, that tells me that it's pulsing I've removed the output capacitors from this which then means I get pulses which are quite high voltage pulses higher than the batteries out of the out of that unit and this is a very good way of desulfating and uh, charging batteries so all of these batteries um, came at around 13 volts and I'm put, putting them onto this charger and I'll take them up to 14 discharge them so that they're all the same and then recharge them conventionally um, this bank of batteries um, has had this treatment and I've let them stand for a, a few days and I've got different batteries marked. Um, some of these are just, are just above uh, 13 volts, and so we've got a washer on top of the ones that are at 13 volts. And there are others which are at 12.8, 12.9 12 volts, and we've got a little piece of wire on the ones that are the lowest. So we've marked the ones that are the highest and the ones that are the lowest, so that we can group them together, so that when they're in series, um, they won't be overcharged, um, they'll behave in the same way, and I can keep electrically similar groups of batteries together. So over here, and again, wires are very untidy because this is, it, this is an experimental installation, and I don't know yet exactly how it's going to be wired up in its case of suck it and see, and we've got to try it. And so I've tried different controllers. These um, are good. There's a Solar 30, and here are, um, uh, it's a Solar 60 or CM602, uh, oh, 60, that's 60 amps, 24 volts. Um, and these are very good. Uh, they have a, a display that shows the voltage. It shows the temperature. It shows the current going in. Um, and then it also shows uh, the ampere hours in and ampere hours out. Um, and it also shows uh, the cutoff voltage that, uh, that, uh, and, uh, for overcharging and uh, overloading. Um, and there's a more sophisticated one up here. Sorry, forgive these two wires. Um, these go off to an inverter, which I'm not using for the moment. Um, uh, but this one is actually more sophisticated in some ways with its uh, parameter control. At the moment, my battery is at 90, uh, 90 percent 97% capacity. Um, this is another sort of um, box. This is made by a chap in Poland, and it controls some relays. I haven't got these connected up yet. And 
those relays can switch on a load when the voltage goes to 28 volts so that then the batteries can't be overcharged. So inverters. Around here um, I've got a variety of inverters. Now those top six panels are connected up in series and those are connected up through a conventional um, inverter, conventional, this is power one inverter, um, and uh, um, you can see here the output today if the camera will focus on it. There we are. Um, it's, and so uh, there it peaks between, well, 9, 9.30 in the morning um, and, well, hang on, um, that, in actual fact, that's six, seven, eight, so it really starts coming in at eight. Um, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, and then it fell off after one o'clock. But that's really rather um, rather useful because our other, our other panels really don't cut in till there. So we've got a good few hours of good electricity before. Really, I need some west-facing electricity. Okay, that's fine, but this inverter won't give you the power when you want it. Now, there's the possibility of taking power from batteries. Um, and uh, whilst we're looking at batteries here, I've got a series of switches which are yet to be wired up for the different banks of batteries so that we can actually uh, connect and disconnect um, each set of batteries for maintenance or if we have some sort of problems. It's a good safety device. Um, and the batteries all come through to these bus bars here to which things are connected. Now, uh, one can use a normal mains inverter and rectify the output or take the output from an intermediate DC stage within the inverter to plug in 220, 240, whatever volts DC into a standard inverter. But I'm also trying parallel wiring these panels so that the 30 volts can go into those controllers to go into batteries. And then, of course, you need to take your 24 volts or between 24 and 28 volts on your batteries and get that back into the mains. And these Chinese inverters are good. Um, in due course, I'll be replacing these by appropriate uh, micro circuit breakers and so on. But at the moment, this is very much an experimental installation. This is a 1200 watt unit. I've had problems um, actually controlling the current into this because a, a kilowatt is, uh, well, 1200 watts is best past 60 amps, and my controllers don't like switching 60 amps. So I haven't been able to use the, this yet. But instead, I've got 200, two 600 watt units, um, which are actually pretty efficient, and they get turned on by the two controllers um, every evening, and uh, they put back in about 500 watts each. So I'm getting 1,000 watts out uh, when I actually when I want it, rather than merely when the sun's shining. And then, of course, you also have problems of the batteries becoming fully charged at the moment without these banks of batteries connected up. These batteries down here are actually um, uh, to get, uh, get charged pretty quickly, certainly in the summer months. In the winter, it's none of matter. So the energy from the solar panels is then wasted. So what I've done is that this controller uh, cuts off when the batteries get to 27 volts. It cuts off uh, taking the power from the solar panels. And so I've got this inverter wired directly into the solar panels in parallel with the controller so that this inverter, which doesn't cut in until 28 volts or so, um, um, is sitting here and is really quite quiescent. You can see some lights flashing. I don't know what output it's giving at the moment. I need to install a meter. But basically, that's taking the excess energy from the solar panels now that the batteries are charged. Um, and uh, when the batteries are low, um, then this controller sends the uh, power to the batteries and uh, there's too little voltage at 25, 26 volts uh, for this inverter to do very much. But when the batteries are full, this cuts off, so the solar panels go up to their full 32 volts or whatever it is, and this uh, inverter is then capable of putting um, a kilowatt back into the grid. And so uh, this seems to me like an interesting way to... Um, get a solar installation to work, um, giving the power when, actu when actually one wants the power to come out and when it's useful. Um, and this doesn't rely then 
upon government tariffs. This relies simply upon uh, using the power as efficiently as one can uh, whilst it's being generated by the sun.